here's the logo of Studio Canal Plus. And uh, my name is John Carpenter. And uh, we're going to talk about ghosts, uh, ghosts of Mars, right? We're going to talk about Prince of Darkness. And I'm sitting here today in the studio with the one, the only, Peter Jason of Hollywood. How are you, Pete? Pretty good. I probably confused you because I was in Ghosts of Mars also. I know. You've been in almost everything I've done. Well, not really. <laughs> so here we begin, uh, Prince of Darkness. We made this in 1986, I believe. 87. We released it in 87. It was a little $3 million film I made, a return to horror. And this is kind of the opening sequence. A little uh, a secret that we find out later about. And uh, Prince of Darkness. I had a great time making this movie. It was a whole lot of fun. It's a fascinating film to make. We shot this part at SC, USC. And you don't come in for a while, do you? I'll come in right now. What I mean, in, in the movie, in the movie. <laughs> this is my first movie with you. And I, I remember uh, going into the casting session and you handed me the script and said, take it home and tell me what you, what, what you think about it. I don't even know if you're interested in doing these kind of movies, but take it home and read it and see if you like, uh, if you like the part and tell me what you want to do with the character. <laughs> no one had ever asked me that before. They usually just give me the script, tell me what to do and where to stand and what to say, you know? Nobody ever said what I wanted to do with the character, and I was totally befuddled by it. Well, an actor, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I thought I was up until that moment. And... <laughs> so what did you what did you come back and do for me? Well, I, uh, I, I read it several times and didn't have a clue, and an actor friend of mine told me uh, what I'd like to do, in, and he, I made him read it. He'd done... David Warner, you know the actor. He's, oh, sure. He's, uh, he's done many, many movies, and uh, he said, I've always wanted to die and come back to life in horrible pain. And I went, oh, what a great idea. And it kind of jogged my, my thinking, and I read it again, and I came up with another idea, and I came up with a third idea. There were seven people that turned into zombies. Remember I told you about that? <laughs> and you said, seven? <laughs> How do you know that? I said, I counted them. And uh, I said, let's make them the seven deadly sins. And you went, what a great idea. And then you went, oh, no, wait, I'm going to have to rewrite everything. I'm going to have to change the script. This is going to cost way too much money. No, I, we, we can't do this. And you went with the first idea. I did, huh? Yeah. I don't remember any of this. You don't? But I take your word for it. Yeah. <laughs> Victor Wong. We're now seeing Victor Wong, the late Victor Wong. He passed on this year, unfortunately. He was a very sweet man. I'd worked with him on Big Trouble in Little China. And, of course, Donald Pleasance, I'd worked with him on Halloween. And uh, Escape from New York. Fantastic actor, Donald Pleasance. He's so real in every situation, you know. Did you see all those ants there? Yes, I did. Where'd they come from? Well, they were provided. Yeah, yeah, I know, but in the movie We plot. had a bug wrangler. Well, you see, things are happening on the earth that are, that are not right. Something is going on. The sky doesn't look right. The insects are crawling. We have a general happening. feeling of foreboding. We've discovered some secret diary. And there's a big secret buried underground. There, there you are in the there credits. I am right there. there. That, for the first guy that died, the keeper of the yeah, that thing on his chest. Yeah. It was like a sentinel type guy. He just died. Now, and... I have a question for you. It's going to come up later in this, and I just want to remember it. But inside that box, I guess, can, can we tell about it now? You can tell about it if you wish. Inside that box, you know, there's a key. Is it really? Now, this guy, did he go down there every day and open it up and check out stuff? You're asking me what the backstory of this movie was. Yeah. I have no idea. Well, he dies in the opening moment. Well, I have no idea, but there's the key right there. Yes. Now, look at that key. Uh-huh. It's an old one. It's an oldie. So it's been used? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is back at my, uh, shot back at my alma mater. Uh, Dirk Blocker. That's right. I spent many, many happy years at SC as a film student. I really enjoyed myself there. Had a great time. I learned everything about how to make movies there. Well, you know what they say. Once a Trojan, always a Trojan. Uh -huh. <laughs> My dad graduated from Dennis SC. Dunn, another very fine actor I love working with. It's Jameson Parker. But we had very a very short shooting time on this film. It, as I recall, it was a little over 30 days, but wasn't much. This was a very inexpensive film. And uh, 
Lisa Blount as How did you manage to make a movie like this with all of those people for that amount of money? Uh, everybody wanted to work on it. It couldn't be done today? Not today, no. But again, this is, this is the kind of the late 80s it was possible to do. And I had, I had the movie pretty well planned out. Is that a set? This is a church in downtown uh, Los Angeles. I can't remember the street it's on now, but I guess it still exists. Los Angeles Street, I think. Is it? I think so. People tell me that it's still First there. First in Los Angeles, I think. Is that right? Yeah. How do you know? Well, I was born here. <laughs> <laughs> what does that have to do with where this church is? Uh, I was born in uh, L.A., you know? I see. Actually, yeah. I was born in Hollywood, but I went down there. <clears throat> I worked in this church. You did? Yeah. You'll see me in a minute. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we went out on a set that we built, and we built this set out in, uh, I believe it was Lancaster. We had to drive out there every day. No, no, no. It was out in Magic Mountain. Well, what, what, where? Simi Valley? No. Where was it? What do you call that area? No, I'm, Magic I'm, Mountain area. Uh-huh. I thought it was Lancaster. No. Just past Magic Mountain, you hang a left, go onto the freeway, and there was that big complex. Uh-huh. Yeah, it might be called Simi Valley. No, it isn't called Simi Valley. I'm no. sure it isn't. Okay. No. Sandy so King. I thought you were, I thought you were uh, uh, born in, in uh, Los Angeles. You don't know these? Uh... Born in Hollywood. Hollywood Presbyterian Hospital. Wow. Although you can pull me up on uh, IMDB, and it says I was born in New York in 1950. <laughs> Is which, that right? Which makes me 51. <laughs> I like that. Young child, just a child. Well, in actuality, I was born in Hollywood in 1944. <laughs> so you know they have nothing but fact on that IMDb. We shot, uh, I believe, almost all the exteriors at SC in one day. We only had one day to get it all done, including this little night shot. And we stole this little shot of the moon outside of uh, our set when we were out uh, in the Magic Mountain area, as really? you say. Yeah. This is at SC right here? Uh-huh. Who's that guy? He's just a guy. Supposedly your boyfriend, right? I have no idea. I think it's making Jameson a little jealous. Uh, I think it's worrying him, don't you think? I think so. O'Donnell was one of my, my dearest friends in the business. He, uh... What a pleasure it was to work with him. Man. And he was so much fun. He looked so serious that's, all the time. But this the guy thing. was so he, much he fun. He has a, an incredible sense of humor. There's you a scene that comes oh. later in here where he's talking around the... I, maybe I shouldn't talk about no, that's this. That's all right. But he's talking around the... Uh, the canister. The yeah. canister. And uh, his back is to the camera. And we're all... Serious moment. And he was making faces and none of us could hold it. I mean, it was <laughs> very difficult. He's a pixie. He is a pixie. Now... Victor is delivering a whole mouthful of dialogue here about quantum mechanics. Jameson is interested in something else. Yeah, he's interested in her. Ah. It was difficult for Victor to do, but he did a good job with it. And his, uh, if you notice, though, the left side of his face was uh, paralyzed. He, had a, he has a, had a disease as a kid. And Victor had a tough time growing up. He had tuberculosis when he was really little and had to stay in really? the sanitarium for years. I know he had his own diet. He wouldn't yeah. eat with the rest of us on the yeah. set. He had brought his own every day. Yeah. Remember those little boxes piled up uh -huh. on top of each other that he'd always bring? And he always had a story. Always had a great story. And you never knew what it was about. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to lose him. This was uh, Gary Kibbe's first feature film as a cinematographer yeah really yeah, i'd met him on uh, big trouble in little china his father was a cinematographer right i don't think so he, i know he was in the business I think he was in the business but i don't think he was a cinematographer no we shot this the san fernando mission uh -huh. it was a very beautiful mission out uh, in the san fernando valley right here in los angeles california so you can shoot here absolutely i love i love shooting los angeles i just love the uh, first of all i love los angeles generally as a city. I love setting the movies here. And Gary did a really good job for me in this film. It's a very uh, tasty. And, and there are a lot of effects on this thing. Beautiful too. lighting. But you know, you've got to realize we didn't, we didn't spend any money on this. So this was all kind of done by sleight of hand. We had very, very limited funds. There's Martin Quatermass 
Ah, he's a personal writer. friend of mine. He's a very personal friend of mine. <laughs> he's what's, a fine, fine What's he guy. working on now? I think he retired. I heard he was an alcoholic, but I'm not sure. And I think he retired from the business. You're kidding. No, really. But he's still writing. I, he's writing, but nobody wants to read what I he writes. I see his name in the trades every now and again. Damn. I think he's still working on stuff. And then we, we got the supernova footage from CNN. There had been a, a supernova explosion uh, a few years earlier in the, in the 80s. So I, like the, I like this moment because uh, it comes off. He notices it on TV, and there's no sound. You know, how, how you'll see a movie, and all of a sudden, it's always the exact news break you need for the plot of the film, right? And in this particular moment, you see it, and he's working on something else, but then he goes over and, oh, and turns on the sound. I love that. That's, 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 that was, a, that that's, was my directorial touch. Did you like that? You did that? Huh? <laughs> Very nice. Or back in... Uh... Downtown L.A. This church was, I believe, a, a Korean uh, American place of worship originally. Um, it had been closed for a while. Yes, for a long time. It was a beautiful. Were old those church. pillars on front? Uh, were they added or those? No, those are real. Those are original. Those are real. This is the real church here. This is the real interior. And then we walk down to our set. That's a fake set piece right there. They're walking onto. Now we're on our set. And I believe we're going to go take a little tour down to the uh, to the lower uh, depths to see this special room. We'll need the key. That's right. <laughs> Hello. And uh, we cut to actually uh, an old building down in Long Beach. I don't remember if you remember us shooting down there. It used to be. I do. Down a resort beach, down near the Pike. Yep. And it's, it was sitting on the beach, and it used to be a big ballroom. They used to have big, fancy, uh, like, dinner parties and shows. I down just there. want to know who lit these candles. <laughs> because I think we're I going to know. see about 18 billion candles that someone had to light. Someone had to light each one of them. And that's nice. They're, they're going in and out of shadow. This is a very beautifully lit scene. This building, unfortunately, was falling apart when we shot in it. And it's since, I think, been demolished. It was a favorite location of... It was, it was difficult to get into the set itself. Yeah, because the ceiling was kind of caving in. <laughs> I think it was condemned or something. But so we had to sign all sorts of waivers to get in there. I well, we wouldn't sue anybody if somebody got hurt. My back still hurts from that day. Is that right? Are you threatening me? <laughs> Are you threatening me? <laughs> I did get hurt on this movie, though. What had happened to you? There's a scene that comes in later when we when we can't get out and we're running from room to room to room trying to bust out, and I actually tried to smash through a door, and I should have been acting, and I was really trying to do it, and the door was being jammed shut, and I creamed my shoulder on the door, and I like pinched a nerve that's, you know, you get these little things as an actor, you know, like fall off a horse or whatever you do that you carry with you for through life. I hit this door so hard on the wrong spot. And you still have this pain? I still have this pain. Well, I didn't ask you to do that, did I? No, I was acting. Oh, okay. This is, uh, right there is the the uh, son of the anti-god. See, people people uh, mis kind of misunderstand the plot of this movie. It's really not about the devil, although it's called Prince of Darkness. I came up with this idea of, a, of an anti-god, and this is his uh, his son. And uh, I came up with it by my love of uh, science at the time. I, I was into quantum mechanics. And, and uh, that's why I wanted to kind of unite uh, religion and science. But in a, it was all mumbo-jumbo anyway. It's just a horror movie. There's a, but there's a lot of talk about atoms and mm -hmm. uh, atomic movement of, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, psychokinetic uh, yeah. movement or whatever you call that, <clears throat> which is just interesting enough to make you go, what? Yeah. <laughs> well, I was into. I had discovered just just a, a year or two before I wrote this script. I had discovered uh, quantum uncertainty, and by reading some books on it, and I was kind of fascinated and mesmerized by it. So I wanted to incorporate it in a script. Uh, unfortunately, there's. It's impossible to explain. So. But you you explain it by by the way you move things in it, like the the ants at the beginning that appear, the 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 weather, the stuff that you start slowly moving, like the worms that come later on the window, and all the stuff that that starts to be moved by some kind of force, and that's your devil or your whatever it is. But uh, it's this 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 movie slowly builds and builds and builds and builds and. 
and, and even the music. Who did the music? Well, I don't know. But it was fun. It's fun doing the music to these films. I uh, work with Alan Howarth at the time. I no longer work with him now, but at the time we did. And we do it in about four or five weeks. Put it in. Uh, all my scores are basically improvised, just on the spot. I just uh, provide what I think the scene needs. Do you watch the scene while you're doing the music? Yeah. On a, on a, on a TV set. You come up with nothing before you see it. That's correct. Wow. That's correct. I'm not smart enough to come up with anything before. I so do you start off on a on a on a piano or a synthesizer? A or? synthesizer. I work all almost totally on a synth. And you start by watching it and just playing and then, and recording that, and then we you just record start to work that. And, and uh, I have a 24 track recorder hooked in to the movie. So basically, I have 24 tracks to play with. I keep layering the sounds until I think we've got something that that works for the scene. Is your first layer usually kept? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Sometimes I'll I'll start doing a score, and then about four or five days in, I'll discover a sound or a direction. I'll say, that's what we should be doing. And I'll go back and redo it. Occasionally, I did that happen. But the foundation is probably the most important. Yeah, always. And, and that's a constant? Uh-huh. Will you do it for the whole movie, or will you do it for scene to scene? Scene to scene. But yet, you you start. In, I start incorporating sounds that I've used before. Right. So am I using a kind of a low uh, string sound or a bass sound? Well, I'm going to go back to that again because it unifies the movie. Do you pick an instrument that's going to be your major? Not instrument? really. Not really. I'm a, I'm just kind of a low synth guy. I love low synth bass notes. That's my kind of score. And held notes. That's right. Is the tension? You find that, that that does provide tension. Uh, there's two kinds of scoring in movies. One is the the kind of uh, underscore minimalist idea, and one is Mickey Mousing. Mickey Mousing was made famous by Max Steiner. He's an old composer. And for instance, in King Kong, every step that King Kong made is scored. Bum 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 bum. Every yeah. emotion is scored. That's Mickey Mousing. And Jaws. John Williams is the biggest, is the most famous Mickey Mouser of all. <laughs> because you see, Darth, Darth Vader, bomb, 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 bomb. Every, every good and evil, everything is scored so heavily that you haven't got a chance to miss, to, to, to miss anything. <laughs> the reverse of that, or the, the, the other way of scoring, is to underscore it where it's, uh, you're, you're, you're not in the way, you're just providing a foundation. One of the... One of the f most famous underscorers was uh, uh, Bernard Herrmann, although he, did some, he didn't do Mickey Mousing per se. His scores sit there, and there's, they, they, there's something strange about them underneath. They start getting to you. Like the, the score for Vertigo, which is a perfect example of, of underscoring. So I was always attracted to that, and I was attracted to the synthesizer. So uh, off I went. This movie looks very good today, and I'm looking at it. I'm, uh, it's, good. It's, it's it's very pretty. How'd you get Alice Cooper to get in this? Well, the executive producer friends? no, the executive producer was his manager, and uh, I had Larry gone, Franco. No, uh, or Shep. Shep Gordon. So I had gone to, uh, I'd actually gone to a WrestleMania, and. Uh, Alice was there on the show. He was a part of the show, so I met him there. And he wanted to be in a in a horror film, and he had an impaling gag. Yeah, with the bicycle. Yeah, he had an impaling gag that he used on stage. So I said, "Well, you can oh. be in the movie if we can use that, because <laughs> it's great. It's a great thing. It's a great deal." All right, ants on the bag lady there. Yeah, we'll see her again. I liked her. And she was a casting director and actress, Joanna Merlin. No kidding. Yeah. Well, she does a great job in this. Yeah, she's a terrific lady. Very nice. She cast uh, Big Trouble in Little China for me. Oh, she did? Yeah. Beautiful low-key lighting by Gary. Yeah, great. Yeah. Looks so rich. But you're not, we haven't seen you yet, have we? We haven't been introduced to your character I don't know, yet. We, were, we were talking away, I must have come in. I don't think you have yet. I think really? the audience is waiting breathlessly for you to arrive. I think 
I come in with, with Alice. You think? Well, he he has a moment, and then I uh, I think I arrive. I remember s- seeing him in a very dramatic moment, and then a, I come in with a light moment. I don't know. It might be that kitchen scene where I'm whistling and juggling and I don't the think trumpet. we're there yet. I think you come in. I believe you come in in this big uh, when everybody's loading up the equipment, bringing the equipment in to to, to study this thing. I saw Lisa a couple of years ago. She still looks really terrific. A really pretty lady. She is beautiful. You have a lot of great looking girls in this. Uh, they all Susan do. Blanchard, oh, yeah. who's like the, uh, innocent. She's oh, yeah. like Bambi, and you chose her to give birth to the devil. <laughs> she never, never played a role like that before. <laughs> it's so Why great. It's a great choice. And we had Anne Marie Howard. Anne Howard. Sue, she, you, you can see her on on TV every night. Absolutely. She's she's got a different commercial for. Uh... Anne Yen was Lisa. I thought she was a very pretty girl. Nice little matte painting by Jim Danforth of the something going on with the. I sun. love meeting Dirk Blocker on this picture. Dan's kid. Uh huh. From uh... good guy lives in Santa Barbara. I've run into him in a few auditions. He's a salt of the earth kind of guy. So what was your first movie, Pete? What was the first movie you ever did? First movie I ever made was Howard Hawks's last, <laughs> Rio Lobo, with the Duke. You had a death scene with the Duke, didn't I you? I did. I died in the Duke's arms. <laughs> well, you're next, broke kid. <laughs> I remember uh, telling you uh, uh, when you see. I saw that movie at a preview before they had cut it down a little bit. And they had your entire death scene in there. And at the preview, it was a literal replay of the death scene in Only Angels Have Wings. Thomas Mitchell and uh, Cary Grant. Grant. Yeah. I remember telling you that it looked, and you looked so heartbroken. <laughs> <laughs> because I thought we were original. <laughs> Nothing's original anymore. What did Hawk say, tell you to do? What did he say? <laughs> he said, uh, he told me the story. He was a he was a filmmaker in during the war, a correspondent, and uh, he said he'd seen a guy die in battle, and this guy didn't want anyone around. He said, told everyone to go away. There's Alice. Yeah, looking at the sun. Yeah. I, I think Actually, there's a conjunction. There's a moon in the sun, which is a kind of a. No, you watch. I think there's going to be a. I believe you're coming in here in a minute. See, we're going from. See, you have a great drama. memory of this. Either that, or you've just watched this. Drama to humor. No, no. Knowing I remember you. coming in right after Alice. I thought it was a little closer to. Yeah, we got to go on his face because I remember it goes from face to face. Now, whose idea was it to do the the mouth trombone? Do you recall? I think I was just goofing around on the set. And said, use it. And I you said, said <laughs> use it. And, uh, <laughs> and then when I saw it in the film, I went, that looks like it was dubbed. <laughs> That's all you. You know, it's like actually hitting someone in a film doesn't look as good as missing them, you know? <laughs> I think we're going to see you on the inside here in a minute. Yeah, we've got to set up shop here. I think I don't carry boxes. I'm a doctor. Yeah, what a joke. <laughs> you as a physicist, what a laugh. Thank you very much. You know, I went to Carnegie Tech on an engineering scholarship. Engineering is, okay, that's one thing. I'm talking about <laughs> theoretical <talking> physicists. <laughs> no, Pete, you could be anything hey, you wanted. Hey, 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 you hey, hey. Ladies and gentlemen. Hold Peter, it down. Here's an entry. Peter Jason of Hollywood. You looked a little bit younger than those days. You think? A little bit. Of course, so did I, huh? Now, I remember, this is the shot I remember when you walked in and we, we oh, panaglider or followed you around a little bit. <laughs> you, I remember uh, Victor actually split in the middle of this scene <laughs> and leaves me hanging. And, and you always know what to do. As long as the camera's turning, I didn't you're know what to do in this shape. moment. You'll see, I'm totally bef- befuddled. What did you expect Watch him to do? This. Look at, he's gone. I thought that was performance. <laughs> that was, what do I do with my hand now? Stick it in my pocket. I have no one to talk to. 
<clears throat> Tom Bray. This is a this is a funny guy. Yeah, we brought him in for a, the last minute for a couple of reshoots because we needed uh, a little bit more juice. He has one of the most violent death scenes in this movie. Yes, he does. <laughs> yes, he does. There's a lot of violence in this film, unfortunately, or fortunately, it depends on how. There you are, sticking your nose in the scene. He looked very dapper in that outfit, I must say. Oh. Yeah, the, even though I don't think they'd let you <laughs> ever teach physics anyplace. Did the Bushes costume this one? Yes, they did. No, actually, they didn't. I'm sorry, they did not. They did not. This was kind of scrounged together costumes. Bring your own, basically. Sandy costume, this? <laughs> <laughs> Out of the carpenter closets, That's we it. got these costumes. So this was uh, not not a lot of money was spent on this, huh? Three million. Three million. That's not even the price of an actor today. <laughs> That's what you get, isn't it, for your film? Just under that. Oh, okay. Just under though, huh? That's a pretty shot there by that window with the light coming in there. There's always a golden glow in this movie. Yeah. Well, what a coincidence. <laughs> we must have been in the right place at the right time. <laughs> Jesse Ferguson. There's a voice. I'd, I'd seen him on stage when and Kurt Russell was in a play, The Hasty Heart. You go to theater? I did then. I did a play Kurt. this summer. You never showed up. Well, I, <laughs> hey, when you make as much money as Kurt Russell, I'll go to your plays, pal. <laughs> uh, but I thought he was great on on uh, on stage. He was great. Kurt's a great great kid. Yeah, I did a Daniel Boone with him thirty something years ago. He played my younger brother. He was just as good then. I have no idea what all this meant, but anyway, I tried to write weird shit in here. That's basically all I did. Just weird <laughs> shit. <laughs> There's the mug. Donald arrives in a limo. Well, he doesn't drive. No. <laughs> I'd had to drive him home from Long Beach one time. Oh, my God. We got lost coming to Long Beach, so we decided never to let him drive in Los Angeles again. Oh. <laughs> That's why you drove him. I got to take him back home to the Chateau Marmont one day, and I am telling you, it was the most fun I ever had. He was scared to death the whole way. I don't think he likes to drive. <laughs> well, he doesn't like to drive, and, and it, it, he was freaked out because of his experience getting to the set. He was late the first day and he was just absolutely in horror and lost and confused. There we go. So we got to the maggots. Are you all right? We're ready. This kind of has a nice... Uh... Such a gentle man with such fire in him, you know? Capable of just coming out with the most fire. Donald was a uh, fighter pilot in World War II. He was in the uh, I didn't know. RAF. He shot down and was in a Japanese prison camp. Wow. Donald went through it. So I don't know. What, I, I always meant to ask him, was he in a Spitfire? I don't, I don't know. I always meant to ask you about those lights. Yeah. They were brought in by the people. Yeah. Uh, to set up so we could illuminate this yeah. canister, right? Yeah. Okay. I guess. I don't know. They're just a fact. They're just there for a fact. This is the scene I was talking about when Donald, you'll get a shot, I think, over his shoulder when he could crack us up. Talking, he, he has a lot to say in this scene. I believe they're translating something here. I, you know, I can't remember exactly what the plot is. It's the th stuff out of the book, out is of the Bible. They're trying to tell. It's not a Bible, but it's it's like four different languages that has been changed. And there's, uh, oh, there's my worms. Worms on the window. Yeah. How did they get there? Well, That's they were drawn to what it. you want to know about this movie. How did the stuff get there? It was moved kinetically. It was forced by some kind of other force. So you should have directed this picture. You said that at the beginning. When I came in and told you there were seven guys that turned into zombies, should we be the seven deadly sins? And you went, you want to direct this picture? <laughs> I said, no. Uh-oh, uh that's starting to speed up a little, isn't it? Yeah, we, we had this thing built, and it kind of looks like a lava lamp, doesn't it? <clears throat> a green lava lamp. Yeah, but why couldn't the top come off? I don't remember. 
it had something to do with that's the interlocking the, inside of the so that's thing. That's the problem with getting old. I can't remember the, some of the details. No, it was very thing. ingenious. It was actually it was? an in, uh, it was some kind of an uh, interlocking lock that only could be locked from the inside, unlocked from the inside. Is that correct? Yes. I'm impressed, actually. Yeah. Uh, well, I remember that was the thinking, story. I said, how, did, how come this thing doesn't start spinning faster <laughs> and the lid doesn't fly off and the devil fly on uh, everybody? Because it hasn't, it's locked from the inside. So I should have had you deliver those lines just like you're saying them now. Yeah. The audience, I would have. Yeah, you should have given me a couple of more lines. <laughs> I should have? Sure. I gave I you too many as it is. <laughs> Uh-oh, she bumped into something. She's going to get a bruise. <laughs> Now, to me, that moment was an important moment in the movie because that's when she gets impregnated. Oh, yeah. That's, she just had sex that, with the devil right there. That was there. it. Bang. But you notice how subtly we played it. It was almost a background moment, wasn't it? She actually backed into it. Did she? Mm-hmm. Is that, is that a comment on the kind of sex that she had with the devil? Hello. But I want to tell you. We pretty much become set bound for a long time in this film, which was the, one of the reasons that we were able to do it uh, for such a little amount of money. Because uh, in the beginning of the movie, so sets are are basically one of the huge production. Well, costs. when you can camp out someplace, put it that way. When you can, when your movie takes place in one location, then it, it's a lot easier to deal with. Sure, transportation. All of it, cast, everything, everything is everything. easier. Once you're camped out, it's 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 the very it's moving to various locations that that can uh, can really. When cost are you going to make a western? There you go. Now we're talking here, no, here some in full in full form. See what we can see if we you're can get juggling, any more props. Any more props at all? You got a Let's cup see. of coffee. You're a doing your a lit cigarette, a horn, your mouth trumpet, and you're annoying everybody in the cast. <laughs> That's my job. I had to pay a little bit of money for this. Yeah, uh, I was going to uh, say this looks like Tom and Jerry. Uh, we had to pay. Uh, I remember that, seeing this. As, I remember Jerry? seeing this uh, Tom and Jerry as a kid, where he's having a dream with the devil. With the devil, yeah, yeah. And the big old bulldog, oh, oh, pulling him back down in the pot. And that's who we think of as the devil, who we saw as kids, a little red fox dressed up like a devil or whatever he was. Out the side, little shot out the side window there at the church, a little alley. Now, what a sweet, innocent Bambi type she is, isn't she? Why did you do that to that poor girl? <laughs> she wanted to play. Uh, for the... Uh-oh. Yeah. Is that some sort of bruise there, huh? Probably nerves. It's a bruise, Walter. You don't bruise from nerves. I used to break out when I was 12. Doctor said it was homosexual. They're really basically, uh, in my career, there's two kinds of stories that I tell. One is a, a kind of a journey movie and one is a kind of siege film this is this comes under the basically comes under the uh, uh, category of siege you guys are holed up in here and trapped assault on precinct uh, 13 yeah. that kind of thing you still got all your props there pal <laughs> be frightened without them wouldn't you I, I, if i could have just put those things down for a second i could have kept tom in the room maybe but no 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 <laughs> such luck now we're outside here. We're going to come. We're coming up, I believe, to the famous uh, uh, Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper provided uh, grotesque gag. The stunt prop on this was Alice's. Uh huh. Oh. He, he again. He used it in it's a, from his show. In his show. I'll be darned. It's a really neat little thing. It's it's really hard to figure out how he does it. Well, it's, you can see it sticking out of his back. Mm -hmm. It's a nice man. Alice Cooper is a really funny guy. Probably one of the greatest actor golfers there is. <laughs> He's a great golfer. You keep claiming to be the best golfer of all. Well, I'm not no Alice Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty soon here, things are not good. There we are. Oop. Ooh. Yeah.
This is my favorite part when he falls forward and doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> He's sitting on his bike. <laughs> John, that's there he bad, is. man. Huh? Oh, it's sick, isn't it? Sick. There's a there was blood in that. There's usually not much blood in your movies. There's a lot of blood in some of my films. This one this one is a pretty pretty gory little movie. But uh There was blood coming out of his mouth on that one. Oh yeah. Big time. The structure of this movie is interesting. Once it gets started, it just keeps ramping up and ramping up. That's the whole structure of it. It's not quite a three-act three act structure as as defined as I, I have done before. It really is a slower build. Well, I like the use of the actors in this movie, which is different than most movies today where you have two stars and they have all the stuff and then you have peripheral characters that can pretty much be extras. In this, everybody has stuff to do. And I think you're building a lot of the suspense by having each of the actors slowly, one at a time, turns into a zombie. Or everybody has is a part of the story, and it makes for much better storytelling, I think. It's all just ensemble. I always love ensemble acting. Yeah, me too. But, you know, it's not popular with a lot of folks. They want to see their, their lead guy. Or golf and Western? Or... No, audiences. Audiences love, you know. I don't believe it. You don't believe that? I think audiences like to have a story, and I think they like to be involved with a lot of characters. You should be a director. No, nope. oh. I don't know anything about lighting, so tell me about this lighting. Well, you've got your actors there, and you put lights on them so that uh, you can photograph them, basically. You have your backlight, you have your top light, side light, front light, yeah, but key light. Keep... So the key to creating moods, and there's a lot of different moods you have to create in this, what's the point of backlighting? Backlight separates the actor from his background, his or her background. It also can provide, with a rim light around them, can provide a very moody uh, situation. So by putting all those candles in that room, do you get the, do you, does it make the room look bigger? Now, basically, all it does is provide kind of this eerie light in the background. Now, she's lit uh, separate and apart from the candles, but with a little bit of a kind of a gold glow on her. But that room looks huge. It wasn't that big, as I recall. No, well, I'm, I maybe it was. I don't... So does does candlelight like that on film? Ah. How I've do you get that stuff that. to go up? Well, you turn the camera upside down and... No, you didn't. Yeah. Yeah, it just drips out, so... But See, we want to do a reverse shot. How do you do it with a person in it? Huh? How do you do it with a person standing up? Put the person on their head? Huh? <laughs> but how, do you, how do you keep their hair from going gravity-wise? Freeze it in time? No, oh, just a lot of hairspray. <laughs> <laughs> Big group shot. Reminiscent of... Uh, a lot of Howard Hawks movies have to do with groups. This is this is the only day I ever saw you lose lose it. What did I lose? Well, what was wrong? You got disappointed with one person. I did? I, I won't say who it is, but that person couldn't get their line right. Oh, I remember that. And it's in every movie I've ever done with you, I've never seen you lose your cool. You were so upset with this one person. I wasn't cruel and inhuman, was I? No, there's only one thing an actor has to do. Know his lines and show up on time. That's, I guess that's two things. <laughs> <laughs> but come on. Know your words. Oh, it's pooling up there, huh? I, I had forgotten that. I had forgotten all about that. You like, you like tricks with film, don't you? Yeah. You, you like... Yeah, these were really simple. Trying to figure it out, or do you like uh, doing, actually doing it? And, well, and, a lot and, of the and... tricks were written in, and I figured them out ahead of time. Uh -huh. because, okay, we're going to do a low-budget film here. So we've got to do some very simple things. Camera, uh, you know, reverse tricks, uh, perspective changes, gravity tricks, little tiny things. Once you figure them out, they're pretty easy to do. Do you ever run across stuff that you have a problem with that you haven't figured out in advance? Of course. And what do you do when that happens? Get experts in and try to help me, you know. How yeah. do we do this, guys? Yeah. <clears throat> I'd forgotten about the lines, and I can't, I can, but I can remember a shot, one particular shot where somebody had some troubles, but I don't remember my reaction to it. There's like 12 people in this shot, and the camera's moving. 
and all of them are in it. Up till the point where that's, we come that's around. That's got to be very difficult to do. <laughs> that's a wide-angle lens, Pete. Moving you put slowly. a wide-angle lens and you just dolly the camera in slowly. It's really not that hard. I just always believe this guy, whatever he says. Donald, yeah. What is that? He is just well, he's so... a great actor. He was a highly underrated actor, I feel. I loved his work throughout the years. He did so all I. sorts of different kinds of work. Poor, poor little thing. She's gotten uh, whacked yeah. by the devil there. Or the Andy God or whatever the hell it is. How did it get out of that canister is what I it want It dripped know. up and it pooled in the ceiling and then came down on her. That's right. It came so it's kind of an acid, the whole roof. Kind of an acid deal there. They're getting some sort of a, I guess, a telekinetic, kinetic uh, burst yeah. from our my <clears> friend. <throat> so things are moving now. Which is based on just a little bit the, the description of what they're saying on a case that happened over, I believe it was in Austria or Denmark, where this gal would go into a room and the light bulbs would unscrew and all sorts of things would go crazy, and apparently because of her... She set off some sort of... Her, her energy. I don't believe it, but it well, sounded good. Do you make decisions in advance to shooting of, as to a look? Like, will you say all the wardrobe will be a certain way? or all? Sometimes, the, yeah. You do? Sometimes. In this particular movie... So you're making decisions where the costumer comes in, how about this outfit? How about this outfit? How about this outfit? Well, in this film, if you notice the walls and the interior of the church, it's all very brown and muted. So... I put the actors in colors that would pop a little bit against that. Well, for instance... Because I noticed there's a lot more color in these costumes than in most absolutely. of your movies. And because of the background is so is such a bland... And you're in this church. You're in this bland, uh, uh, brownish uh, place for the entire film. So somebody's got to have some color in it. It would be too drab, I felt. Uh -huh. I felt. So a rule of thumb, if you're outside and there's a lot of color, you'll you'll tend to make the wardrobe... No rule of thumb. No. It all goes by what the story is about and how you feel about it, what you want to do. See, this is brown. The whole place is brown. And so I varied the costumes also because it's a big ensemble piece, and you wouldn't expect people in a city to show up wearing... All dressed the same. All dressed the same. Yeah. <clears throat> Dennis and his apple. Dennis is a great kid. I got we're really friends. He friends with he and his wife. He's a, he's a terrific actor. He loves plays too, just like you do. Yeah, he loves well, to he's act an actor. <laughs> we like to act. One, one. I can't remember. Oh, Dennis, don't be picking on her. <laughs> <laughs> Amy. And Yen, right? Uh huh. I like Annie. Yeah, she was she was fun. She's very pretty. With a sense of humor. Have you seen Susan? Who? Radiologist glasses. Oh yeah, she's right outside. And I like her work at the computer too, which is very difficult to do as an actor and make it look like you're actually doing it. Why is that? Because that's not what we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you can imagine yourself sitting down there, can't you? And then you yeah, I can imagine myself sitting down then at a piano too, but it doesn't mean I can play it. <laughs> Don't you just fake it, Pete? Yeah. Yeah. That's Pretty much I everything I do. <laughs> Except hitting that door. I don't remember I mean, that moment. You'll I, see. I, will you point it out to me, it? please? You bet. Thank you. Now, how did they get that canister down this fly? It's like a... Well, it was down there originally. We don't know the logistics of all that. Yeah, seven know. million years? No. Yeah, two, uh, uh, whatever it was. It was uncovered and brought there, probably by lots of monks, don't you think? Uh-huh. Priests or somebody. Jameson Parker was an, is an interesting uh, actor. He was on a television series... Uh, Simon and Simon. For years, yeah. Yeah. Now, the other guy uh, had the mustache, though, on the show, right? Uh-huh. So it was this a choice? Yes, it was a choice. That's yeah. his real mustache. Yeah. He, uh, he had an injury at the, at, it never, from, the, from Simon and Simon and never bothered on getting it fixed. It was a leg. It really hurt him sometimes. 
he go lay in his trailer and try to get over the pain. It was interesting. He, and I don't know why he wouldn't take care of it. And one of his legs, one of his knees or something was really hurting. Hurting a lot of the time. It's just not easy being an actor. <laughs> not if you try to go through doors, it isn't. I remember giving him, he's a... He he's got a, shot in an accident, too. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Thank Actually, God. it wasn't an accident. Uh, somebody had uh, insulted his girlfriend or come on to her. I don't know what the... So he went over to punch the guy out, and the guy shot him. Fortunately, he recovered. He recovered. He's all right. He's a devout... Uh, I call him a double-dog gent. Devout Christian. He used to have two of these beautiful dogs oh, yeah. with him in his trailer. I always call him a double dog gent. Because <laughs> he is, he's a southern gentleman. I would think that's where he lives now, in the south somewhere in South Carolina. Or... He was back, I know, in the 90s uh, doing a couple of things here, but I, I don't know if he's still working or not. I don't Didn't really... he buy some property out in the south? Uh... I don't know. <clears throat> he's still holding your shoulder right now oh, as we speak. They just snap, poor. Dirk's neck. Well, I'll he's... tell you, the devil has some power because that was a girl. I know. Just snapped his neck like it was a matchstick. <laughs> this is more kind of esoteric dialogue between these two. When you get into that scientific discussion of the dialogue, is it to confuse us or is it to actually enhance the? Uh... Could you just give us little tidbits. Yeah. Is well, we like have no a, explanation for all this, this, this stuff that's going on. You believe on. the audience is intelligent enough to sure they are. figure sure they are. out stuff on their own, and we don't want, want, have to know everything. Not supposed to. It's much more fun when we don't. And it keeps you in the movie more. It is because some of the stuff that they're saying is, um, frankly, true, but how it applies to our story <coughs> is just kind of his background material. And, ooh, there goes Look the, at the fire in that, huh? Yeah. I mean, when he wants to, he can open up anything. Donald had a great, great amount of power as an actor. He was a uh, stage actor. Yes, he was. Man in a glass booth. Yes, he was. I think that was one of the first Electronavision productions. What do you mean by Electronavision? There was a period where they made these, where they took these plays, stage plays, and actually, they called it Electronavision. They filmed the play. And, and released it. It was not successful. They did seven or ten of them, classics, uh, uh, on Electronavision. I mean, that was the that was what they were selling anyway. I don't even know what Electronavision is. <laughs> I don't remember uh, exactly what's going on here in terms Robert of Robert Grasmer. Plot. He's he's not gonna. He's, but he's gonna... one of my favorite shots is coming up in this film. <clears throat> and it's a little insert. Of him in the parking lot? When the when the bag lady charges him with a knife, it was a very complicated oh. insert. Oh, yeah. And uh, basically, if you're if you're tracking with somebody and they're raising a knife... And they're running. And they're running, well, you, it would be really hard to get that shot with a this. camera moving. So what we did was move the background and basically drove a truck by with a... With uh, bricks on it, so it, uh, you'll see it in a second. A little sp spooky uh, scene here. Who knows what's going on? But see, I think that's the whole point of it, is to try to keep things as mysterious as possible. Well, she's got some power, and I think she's sending it, you know? That kinetic stuff again. She's got bugs on her, too. He's got bugs on him. <laughs> Were those real bugs? Oh, yeah. That's a disgusting movie. Here she comes. Now, there's the shot right there. Oh, she's on the truck? No. There's a truck with a, a, a part of a set, part of the wall in the background. It drove it by as she's standing there. Oh. A vicious killing here. Yeah, very vicious. Unlike you, but quite effective. I must say, I was inspired by a Terrence Fisher movie, an old Terrence Fisher movie called Curse of the Werewolf. There's a stabbing much like that back in the 60s. How do they get all those bugs? There's a bug wrangler. And he, bug man. He just opens up a box of bugs and 
And hopes to get any of them back? Or? He brings them, yeah. Brings them to the table. Tarantulas, spiders, any kind of bug you want. Hello? You can't really. That's got to be a little expensive. That's not bad. No? You can't really control bugs, you know. You, you just kind of dump them so. out. <laughs> <laughs> there they go. He provided the ants and the roaches and the beetles. And there was a spider we When had we shot Rio Lobo, I was attacked by bees. And Howard Hawks actually had 1,500, I think, uh, de-stung bees from a university and uh, shot it through a glass. Had me in one, one, one area of the glass with bees all over me without stingers. And then had other bees on the outside of the glass uh, and shot through the glass looking like they were all over me. But, uh, I don't know. They, they, that was not fun. Was it not fun? Bees crawling up your nose and in your ears? And no, it wasn't fun. You're an actor. Yeah, I was acting like I was being attacked by bees. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Another Danforth uh, matte painting, very pretty. Mm. Real moon? No, no, all fake. Fake. That's a fake everything. It's a matte painting. And more bugs crawling. Those and... aren't fake bugs. No, 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 no. This is where everyone has the dream. Everyone in the vicinity, right? Yeah, it really the gets it's dream. kind of a weird uh, what deal. What was that? What was that concept? What uh, everyone having the same dream? It's a warning from the future. Sent so, backwards in time. And is it caused by a proximity with with the cylinder or uh who why are you asking me these questions? I don't have answers to them. It's a damn should, dream. Pete. We should have Jeez. we should have quartermass here so we could ask them. God, what do you want? Asking me things like that. I don't know. This is like a good idea. We shot uh, that dream on uh, on video and photographed it off a TV set. Handheld. Mm -hmm. So it has a kind but of. You had to do. Look. You had to do many different takes of it because the figure is different in a few of them. Mm -hmm. And. But it's always the same movement, coming mm -hmm. left to right across the figure. And uh, So you, you shot it on video, and then you shot the video? We shot it at a television set with a video playing on it. And, and inside, you shoot inside, in, inside the, the that's frame. Inside wow. the frame. It so gives that, us, does that give it that shakiness? No, that's, our, that's inherent in the shooting of the video. But what it gives it is a, is a, video, is a TV strange line quality to it. So it's like kind of like third generation or something. It's like a transmission. See, that's what you're getting yeah. is a transmission you use from that someplace in they live else. Also, as I recall, no, not the same way, not the same way. But we did some video shooting. Yeah, and there's that uh, that shaky thing that happens in, in in they live when it goes into the in the video shootings too. That it was it's different, but it's not clear. <laughs> not a, doesn't have a sharp edge on it. Well, let's see, how many of my movies have you been in? Let's see, this was your first, Not correct? enough. <laughs> <laughs> this was my first. Now, there's our little dream again. You know, is that Satan? I'm not going to tell you. You're not going to tell me. Because I don't know. <laughs> you were in the Prince of Darkness, They Live. They Live. What else? Body bags. In the mouth of madness, you had a choice. In the choice. mouth of madness, a fine little scene. You did with Sam Neill, with, with Sam Bernie Neal Casey, and Bernie Casey. Village of the Damned, the famous Ben who returns <laughs> home to find his wife impregnated, very upset, forlorn Ben. And then you were himself into an oblivion before he drives into the propane tank. <laughs> And then you were in, uh, oh, there's a little Isle of Lesbos action here. Yeah, she's on top of her. I know. It's a... What are they going to do? Well, it's, it's going to the, the, pass the evil from one... Uh... She's not fighting that much. She's just waking up, I think. I think she's saying, I'm, I'm, I'm not that kind of girl, and oops. She says, yes, you are. Now you are. <laughs> now you are. Join the, join the team. And... Uh, now this. And you were in Ghost of Mars as the, uh, you were the... I, I am the engineer. <laughs> Bobby Carradine likes to think he had something to do with the movement of that train, but he was my assistant. 
I call him the coffee boy most of the time. <laughs> you actually asked me for some direction on that movie. You said, what's my attitude getting, in, well, why am I doing this? Or something like, along those lines. I said, because you want to get out of town and you're proud. You're a train. I actually gave you direction. Yeah, you told me to be John you, Wayne. Why you were giving me problems. I... <laughs> you said save this group and get them out of town. Well, you know, actually that character should have gotten off the train in town and helped those poor kids. There were a bunch of girls and a couple of guys. They couldn't take on all those monsters. They needed the engineer. Gosh, I've got to talk to you and Quartermass. Uh, About the writing, huh? About I, the I have to get to you guys earlier. I could help. I could have helped on Mars there. You ever tried your hand at writing? Yeah, it's so hard to sit down every day. My father used to say, you want to be a good writer, you have to have written yesterday, you have to write today, and you have to going to write tomorrow. That's it. I didn't write yesterday, and I'll probably forget to write tomorrow. The best I could do is maybe a little something today. How can you keep working like I probably could write if I, had a, if I did it into a tape recorder and just told the story and then gave it to somebody to type. <laughs> I can't recall exactly what's scrolling across the information that's scrolling I across the I think it's been screen. taken over now. I think... Uh, uh, it, it's not in their control. Is that the Anne idea? Yen has already lost the computer, right? She was in charge of it. She was in... in oh, she's in trouble team. now. She's in deep trouble. She, I know. That's what I mean. I think it's now the computer's been taken over. That's what I, I thought when I saw it. Look at those old-fashioned monitors and computers. That was the 80s. Oh, that bruise is beginning to have a little... Uh, a little, little thing demonic in it. cross and hook on there. that comes from a, a rock and roll uh, group, a heavy metal album called uh, I can't remember. Blue Oyster Cult is the group, and they had this upside down thing. I always thought, That's what is it? Is it? It's a hook, isn't it? Like a I don't know. I just saw it on their album. <laughs> Let's it's like use a this. cross with a hook. It's a cross with a hook on it. <laughs> it's upside down. Hello. Oh, hell's gonna break loose here pretty soon. Yeah, I think. Uh, we should be building to a, a lot of people about to lose it. And you're going to be building to that moment when you foolishly try to go through a door. And that's what I want to see. When everybody tries to bust out of there? Yeah, I want to see it. Uh-oh. See, I've always loved the, uh, the the background foreground business, especially in widescreen. It's always uh, appealed to me. I've always worked in widescreen. I just love it. Look at the colors here. Yeah. Gary did a great job in very little time. Very little time. We're having a meeting in the Do you think you get more done with a smaller crew? Not necessarily. Depends on what's what you're having to do, what story you're telling. Sometimes you. This was not a big crew on this. Not at all. But sometimes you need a lot of people to get the job done. Occasionally. But a lot of people in a situation like this would be in the way. We we were efficient doing this. Mm -hmm. Very efficient. A little matching dolly in action here. And she's, oh, that's right, she's just typing like crazy. Yeah, see, it's been taken over. I live. Yeah. Now, that, to me, that's, that's, uh, he did a great job with the silent acting. Looking, looking, look here first, look there first. And that's hard to do. Maybe not for you, but. No, I have to be told. <laughs> <laughs> Another reason I couldn't be a director. He's about to, I think, about to lose him. He's about to lose his soul here. Oh, there you go. Took him right down. Mm -hmm. With a forearm shiver. Look at your reaction back is, there, stealing that scene, trying to steal that scene from the other two actors back there. No, I was wondering where people were. <laughs> Where's uh, Anne? Where's uh... shameless? Oh, that's right. They give him the kiss of death, don't they? Yep. This is a moment. Kiss of death. Now that's the part I wanted. Jesse Ferguson's role. <laughs> you know, I mean, Anne Howard's gorgeous. And that wasn't just a peck on the cheek. No, she had to pass the... Yeah, I the, know what she was doing. No, okay. 
But when I get it, they hit me long. <laughs> oh, you bitter. I like that up bitter. close and personal. What are you bitter about? I'm bitter I never get the love scenes. When are you going to give me a love scene? <laughs> That would be something else. You're in a love scene. I like. I'd love to direct that. I can't recall if if we have the uh, the exposition about the the dreams from the future here or not. I recall this is a a kind of a crucial scene, but more gobbledygook in terms of. Uh, well, this could be where he's talking about anybody had a dream. Hmm. I think so. Yeah, it is. It is. I remember the staging of this. Previous knowledge of a future event, a shared vision of and there must be a scientific occurred. reason for everyone having a dream Perhaps about the same dream. Same dream, same time. I don't know why they don't talk about that computer that's been whacked out ever since uh, An Yen went down. Oh, are you criticizing? No, they just no one's uh, paying any attention to it. It just keeps the devil just keeps talking on the computer. No one's listening. <laughs> and the card trick. I thought that was that was Jameson's idea. That was a good idea. It was an interesting, uh, interesting touch. And he makes the card disappear at the right time. Was that his idea? Uh huh. In act, I, I use actors' ideas when they bring me good ones. I know. They come up with something good, I'll use it. Sort of promote camera view of the future and change it. There he goes. That you was actually me, done. You wouldn't let me do Lullaby of Birdland in the kitchen, though. Because I had to pay money for it. You had to make it up. Oh. <laughs> make up something. But I let you do the the mouth trumpet, didn't I? Yes, you did. I did. Yeah, I I didn't get any royalties on that. <laughs> I wrote that song. <laughs> I think Donald knows more than he's letting on. You think so? Yeah, he's. Now one wonders how they're able to move this so smoothly. We don't ever show you that it's on a little dolly. <laughs> Yeah, I noticed you to cut away from the staircase. <laughs> Here's Bugman. How'd you get? How did? Oh yeah, that was one of my favorite gags in the was movie. Was that done yeah. on a soundstage? Uh, Bugman. Let's see. No, the the wide shots are taken. Uh, Not there in the parking lot, out the window. Uh, yeah. Really? Oh yeah. And he. Uh, what was that? He's only made up of bugs. What's that? They do that at three in the morning. Oh yeah. There we go. He's not. He is not human. And he now collapses when uh, the bugs. Uh... There we go. Did you have somebody behind him? Well, actually, we had this whole setup where we poured bugs down this, these pants. There we are. There they are. Oh boy. Yeah, an interesting scene. <laughs> he disintegrates completely because he's not a person. Yeah, I always enjoy the idea behind that. A man being eaten totally alive. <laughs> there was Loved nothing it. left. No bone, no nothing. <clears throat> Here he comes. Uh, this is an incredible performance as far as I'm concerned. Me too. This is. I this loved is it. I loved what he did here. Amazing Grace. Uh huh. And he kills himself. I don't know why, but it's a, it's a really. Uh, Well, he's possessed, John. <laughs> I understand, but he's uh, he's quite an actor. I'm really, really dug yeah, him. Yeah, Jesse's a wonderful, wonderful actor. There he goes. And a fantastic voice. Or he had one before that moment. <laughs> it, was it your choice or Jesse's to come back with that handkerchief around his neck? That was his choice. Covering it. I, I told you. What did I tell you in the beginning? Yeah, I was letting you, you guys figure out your parts there. Yeah. In your case, maybe I shouldn't have, but... <laughs> if it didn't work, you could have always told me to pick another. <laughs> <laughs> and 
No, but I like the fact that each one of those vo- uh, zombies that comes back, like when when they all start marching here shortly, uh, Dirk, whose neck was snapped, coming in like this. Jesse's got his thing. I'm in pain. Uh, each one has their own little character that they found. And is that when you're trying to break out and you're hurting yourself right yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. That? that yeah, there's another shot of it coming up, I think. Oh, yeah, I see. I had forgotten that. I see. So you see, bashing us against the door. Boom! Boom! Ow! No, oh, that was you. Jameson, but I did the same thing on the other door. <laughs> <laughs> and it still hurts today, does it? It still hurts uh, every once in a while. Only on rainy mornings. Uh, I see. There's something really eerie here. about the pace of this movie. It, it really, it really has a, a, a kind of one. Uh, it's very smooth and it doesn't doesn't jump too fast. Now we, there's a little upside down situation here. So basically, yeah. Now what about this shot? Well, you're, it's, it's obviously uh, on the ground. But you have to fill an entire floor to yeah, get it that deep because it, it looks like it's several inches deep. It's upside down, and uh, we just pour liquid into it. And you filled a room. Uh Uh-huh. And shot it from the ceiling. There we go. No, you shot it from the... It's all the way down, follows the uh, flow into her. How is that done? The reverse, with the mannequin and shooting the water up, and then just reverse it, and it comes back in. Uh Uh-huh. Very. And as I recall, Dennis ends up hiding in the closet <laughs> for a long time. For a big time, big part of the film. For a long time. <laughs> I believe all, all, all things are starting to, to cook yeah. now, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. I think we all end up in a room here, don't we? Yeah, it's a barricade situation, isn't it? Trying. Now we know we can't get out, and we can see they're outside. Oh, you're still a human now, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Just with a sore shoulder. I think I'm number 60. I think I'm going to get it now. (laughs) The audience will cheer when you get it. There you are. Oh, yeah, you are about to get it. Ah, there we go. Nailed. Stay away from her. So right. Donald is uh, separated Donald's from the out. others. He's going to hide in the boiler room. <laughs> and the zombies all had a little makeup change. A little bit? Yeah. They whitened us. Made you a little paler? Yeah. No blood, just green fluid in us now. <laughs> Jesse's back. Uh, you see, he's he's happy to be a zombie. <laughs> Each one had their own little uh, choice. There's Dirk. Look at this. <laughs> I love it. Every little devil <laughs> got its due. Into the room, barricade the doors. There's some hilarious outtakes of Victor. Long, running, ar- running around this room. He, said, he just eventually kind of ran around in circles <laughs> and let everybody else do all do the all work. work. Yeah, he's smart. He's been around for a while. I'm not moving that sofa twice. <laughs> we did post-production on this movie at, of all places, the Walt Disney Studios. <laughs> Weird. Our editing rooms were there. We did the mix uh, over there. What do you do in a mix? You take uh, basically the dialogue tracks, all the dialogue. You take the sound effects that are laid in, and you take the music. These are all separate elements, multi uh, tracks. Three different tracks. More, more than oh, three. Hundreds sometimes, and combine them down. Basically. Uh, most movies nowadays are five to one stereo. Do you like the mix? Do you like doing the mix? Yeah. Or is it tedious? Well, it's tedious, but it's uh, it's very important. When's your favorite time of making a movie? When it's over. No. When it's done. 
going, no, I mean, in, I mean going it, into the room to edit? I mean it sincerely. When it's finished, you so really... So that's the director's time. You've really done something. When the it's actor's finished. time is when you're doing it. I mean, I've never gone to a movie and it's lived up to my expectations. Ever. No. Yeah. <laughs> when you're doing it... When I'm doing it, it's my time. That's when I have it's the because full enjoyment of doing it. It's all about you then, you see. It's all about you. Well, that's when I get to play. That's yeah. the fun time. Mm -hmm. An audience's time is when they go see it. The director's time is when it's over and he goes into the editing room, or is it when you it's have all, several different when periods. it's over, it's released, and you can go home and say, you know, I did one. That's the best time. Really, I did it. I did another one. Ah. Oh, it's fun to conceive these these pictures. It's fun. Horror well, so movies. You, have, you wear so many different hats. It you must have different times that you enjoy. But horror and science fiction, Pete, are really fun to play with because it's 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 cinema imagination. It's all fun. All this stuff, horror movies are the most fun to make. They're a blast, you know. What's hard to make is, and tedious is dramas. Oh. Two people talking to each other. There's nothing you can't do. What can you do with it? I love these these uh, these pictures, and I, I love seeing them uh, come to life. I think that's the best time. And then, a director never never really ends. I mean, you have the release, and you have to promote the film. It goes on, on and on from all the things that you do from the, either the conception that's, of it. That's the work. It's all work. It's all work. Basically, the three periods, pre-production, production, and post-production. But then comes the release of it. And then comes the uh, press. And sometimes movies never end. <laughs> they just keep on going. Going and going and going. Halloween is never ended. I still, I still talk about that. Yeah. Damn movie all the time. Well, here, this is 12 years later. Is it 12 years now? And you're working on this. Yeah, well, here we go. <laughs> but Which is great also. Which is know? great. It's also great to sit here with you, sit with an actor. And look at myself when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> we were all younger then, all of us. I had extremely long hair at the time, pulled back in a ponytail as I recall. I had extremely dark hair at the time. <laughs> Mine was dark. Well, the fun part is I saw this gun smoke the other night that I was on, right? When I was a kid. And I'm looking at the performance and I'm going, geez, I was a better actor then than I am now. That's the scary part. So simple, so real, you know? And now you learn all the tricks and you start doing them. And uh, there are advantages to getting older and having done it for a long time. But there are also disadvantages of that spontaneity of not knowing what to do and doing something. What were you playing on the Gunsmoke? What was your part? Uh, I was uh, the bad kid. Bob uh -huh. Pine was the good kid. Uh -huh. We were two, two brothers, and we accidentally hang a guy who <laughs> we're, we're kidding with. And then uh, serious, right? Serious drama, right? Yeah, serious drama. Well, see, the, what you tend to get cast a lot is uh, in comic parts these days because yeah. you can play them so well. But I didn't start out that way. <laughs> <laughs> I started out dead serious. Uh, Actually, they're all fun. It's good. The variety is what I like. I like doing different something, something different yeah. every time. That's why I'm an actor. You know, yeah. I, I could never go to the office every day and do the same thing over and over and over. I would put a bullet in my brain pan. You know, I I like the I like the change. And coming to work every day and not knowing what they want me to do. What am I doing today? Well, you're standing there and saying this. Great. <laughs> where's the food? Where, where's the catering tray? <laughs> Oh, it's hilarious in the morning. The no, the great thing about working with you and Sandy on movies is that is that it's very conducive for a creative atmosphere. You guys are there's no screaming and yelling on your set, you know, and there are on a lot of sets. Believe me, I've heard I've I've heard that people say that a lot. It's you create a family, I don't, and I don't scream at anybody, and we all. We all try to help with the with the thing, you know. You have this vision, and and you try to present it to us, you know, or communicate what you want us to bring, and we try to do that. We uh, that's what I like to do. I like the family atmosphere. Uh, that's what makes it fun. Coming in and uh, telling me what to do. How can I help this thing, you know? And I think that's what's missing in a lot of movies today, and a lot of. Uh, well, it's a lot of pressure on these on some of these guys. A lot of pressure. What pressure? Money. If they're making movies, then they on budget. That's pressure. Pressure is having three it's kids and not pressure. knowing how you're going to pay the rent this week. That's, That's pressure. That's uh, you know, it's a different kind.
People don't like to watch people working. They like to watch people playing. You know, and I, and uh, I think I think that we need to we need more of this stuff. What we're doing here. And Dennis is not going to be in a little trouble here unless we can get through the wall. I think he tells it. She started out getting pregnant. Then what happened to her? Huh? Well, her Susan. tummy was filled, and now it's kind of gone back down, hasn't it? Yeah, but wh why is that? I don't remember. I think it's starting because it's affecting her skin. <laughs> Wait until you see her complexion here in a second. I think she is. I think this thing has been born in her. She looks pretty raw. What amazes me is she's covered with all this stuff that you assume is makeup. Uh -huh. And she'll get up from this sofa in a minute, or this bed, this white sheet and white pillow, and there's nothing on it. <laughs> Not a smudge. That's what got me when I listened. <laughs> There's your video. Yeah, once again. Off of a TV. Uh-huh. Wow. So you're up really close. Extremely close, yeah. Oh, that's right. We're digging through the wall to save... Uh, what yeah. are you doing at this time? You're not on screen anymore. What are you doing out there? Oh, there's brick. I'll be back. Don't worry about it. <laughs> are you on a lunch break or something? I'll take... <laughs> I'm on a will notify. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably at Malibu playing golf right now. <clears throat> no, I'm lying on the floor with devil juice in my mouth. Oh. We have a little scene between them now. And we had a kind of a... Uh, wasn't as short as a lot of TV schedules are, but we had a very tight schedule, so everything had to be done. How long? How, these were long days and nights, weren't they? They were. Yeah, they were. I was pretty tired when it well, was you over. you don't work six days a week. Oh, I don't like to do that. Yeah, that's why your crew is... Uh, will do it. <laughs> It's, uh, I'll tell you, it's, it, on, on most movies that are done around town here, you work six days, Oof. long hours, and it's... I don't know how you get they, on. You can't. All of a sudden, people are screaming and yelling at each other, and that's one of the reasons. Yeah. The joy of working on Village of the Damned up in that, uh, where we were. In Inverness, California. Yeah, 95. Paradise. Five days a week. We had a weekend off to enjoy ourselves. We started when the fog lifted, quit when the fog came back in. It was, that was a dream location. Look at the makeup on her. I'm aware. It's not looking too good. No, she's not looking very good. No. Both she and uh, uh, Lisa Blunt and uh, Susan, both of them, they had to wear this makeup and would tell me, you know, it's really weird when I go to have lunch. Nobody wants to sit with me. <laughs> Nobody wants to eat with now, me. Now here, the force is driving other stuff again, like it did in the beginning. Uh-huh. Those real ants? Uh huh. Shot on location? They just shot on our set. Just dumped the ants in there. Really? Oh, yeah. Who picked them up? <laughs> the bug man. City of City of L.A. <laughs> I don't know where he cultivates the bugs. But... Robert Grasmere. No, that's uh, Ken Wright, right? Mm -hmm. Lomax. Uh huh. No, Grassmere is gone. He was the bug man. Yeah, he was a bug man. Joanna Merlin was the bag lady. Uh huh. She is wonderful. Hello? Hello? I we're going to reach Dennis here in a second, right? Oh, well, we there got we to. Go. What's the music doing right now? The music building. hasn't stopped uh, in this movie in the very end. It just keeps this impending sense of dread. That's the one thing this movie really is all about. It's just dread from the beginning to the end. It's what's happening, what's going to happen. Oh, my God, where are we? That's, that's the basic uh, situation. Well, everybody loved the music in this movie, and, and uh, I read a bunch of reviews uh, that they, they have on, I, on the Internet, right? And uh, everybody that 
loved this movie, talked about the music and how much they loved the music. Yet, can you hum the theme? No, of this you thing? can't. No. <laughs> can you can no. you sing a song out of no. this thing? Again, it's that minimalist. Uh, it just so it sits there. So it's, it's so it's, it's creepy. It it's works like, on you. It's underneath. It's underneath, right? Mm -hmm. Underscore. This works on you. It's tones. It's 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 melodies. There's music there, but yeah. But they say if you notice the music, it's no good. That's not the that's not the that's, uh, trend today, though. See, no, that's that's not. been for a long time mm -hmm. now. That you need to notice the music. It needs to come and hit you in the face. Mm -hmm. That's been since uh, basically. Is that the emotion? I don't know what why that's that seems to be necessary. I don't know when that started. I think probably the end of the. Uh, the cinema of the 70s when we got into the 80s star wars changed a lot of things the whole style of movie making the, the music of movie making kind of brought back an older style and at the same time uh, said goodbye to the the kind of new wave of american movies in the 70s that were taking more risks like taxi driver for instance like you can see that the cutoff point was raging bull everything you know that was the kind of the end of that era and then it was the era of the the big blockbuster, the, the kind of popcorn movie, and that's uh, so that the requires the directors that have the survived have, have made the change. In their Either own that, or like me, have can't make the change, and may remain stuck in the past. <laughs> there she is with a big smile. It's looking good too. Looking good. Yeah. Well, look at the sheets. Oh, yeah. Not a mark on the sheets. Yeah. That's good makeup. Oh yeah. That's grotesque, isn't it? I just said, look, she's like she's burned. Burned from is the Is that inside. special effects or is that makeup? Special makeup effects. One guy comes in, he does the uh, special makeup. Donald decides to take action. Basically, this is a... Now, do they do what you tell them to do or do you allow them the creativity Peter, to come up with something? everybody does what I tell them to do. Everybody. <laughs> You, you once told me all a director has to do is have an answer. <laughs> Even if it's the wrong one. Even if one, it's the wrong one, you have, have to an have an answer. <laughs> This mirror business here where you're looking through the looking glass is a kind of a, uh, I've ripped it off from various places, but I guess it goes back to Jean Cocteau, the Beauty and the Beast. Uh-huh. Out goes his light. A little psychokinetic power there. Let's get the bricks moving here, Jameson. We're in trouble. And he's a, going ape shit. <laughs> it was fun to do that. It was so funny. It is. It this is so fun. funny. And we cut away from Victor doing nothing but running around there. <laughs> not helping anybody. No, he's not helping. She was the press on nails lady on TV. She did uh, press on. Uh, Susan? Uh, yeah. Which made it all the more bizarre that she's this this horrible creature. Joe Bob Briggs, the drive-in critic, was, was, uh, was the first to point that out. <laughs> so if you, you've worked these uh, uh, special effect gags out long before... Most of them, yes long before the day of shooting takes place most of them yeah and you've tested different things to see what works and what and you filmed them so sometimes have, yes sometimes like no. a lot of footage sometimes of... yes sometimes no well the one thing that we had not figured out in this situation was to how to go through the mirror and I'll when we get to the to the scene I'll explain it a little bit more to you but it was a, a rather risky but uh, effective uh, deal Oh, two shots. Oh, nice Got shot. Him. Got him. Now, nice how did that, how was that effect? Because his hands seem to be, oh, those, is that the uh, chopstick in yeah. the, right between the eyes? Yeah. And that works with the devil. Well, it just stops him for a minute, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, here's a little mirror. mirror, here's one of them. What we had to do was we couldn't have, we couldn't get the effect of, of going through the surface of the mirror, so. <laughs> We decided to use mercury in the bottom of, uh, of a, of a hydraulic dolly, turn it upside down, it's, it's filled with mercury. We drained it. 
for weight ballast or uh, and uh, no, yeah. So uh, and for quiet and for running. crane and for the crane had some mercury in it, so yeah, we yeah. stole it from there, drained it out, and of course it's deadly poisonous. <laughs> and it's very expensive. <laughs> yes, shot the sequences, Did you and move? then put it back in, and put it back yeah. into the. <laughs> Mercury. It was a. It was a, that was a last minute because uh, it looks like a mirror when it's not moving. Yeah, and that was you a can last minute go thing. Into it. That was a last minute thing there. We. Uh, that's not really handy. I'm getting hit. That's a stunt. Oh. So <laughs> you beat the hell out of her <laughs> with rubber bricks. Oh, well, come to the effect. We use it a couple of times. I had to. We had to. I was going to try something else, and it didn't really work. And. Uh, Ooh, nice. That's, again, a stunt. I think she goes through the... Yep, yep, there she goes. No, <laughs> that wasn't a real piece of glass. What was that? Candy glass. And where did they throw her? On huh? the mattress? Yeah. That wasn't, on the, that wasn't at the church. That was on location. She went through the candy glass on, on the set and then matched it on the location. I think it's our shots coming here a minute. That's, uh, that's, mercury. that's mercury right there, putting her hand in it. Coming out of it on the other side, that's a... Oh, how is that shot made? We were in the bottom of a, of a swimming pool. We tented it in. We were shooting uh, underwater. And you just put your hand in it, and that's how, how it's lit. How'd you get it so dark? Tended the whole swimming pool in. And so only lit it from certain areas, so the bottom is dark. Then this whole mirror situation, again, we come back to the mercury in a minute. It is a common practice to start a movie not knowing where your big stunt is going to come from. I thought I had another solution to it, but uh, it didn't work out. It didn't work it out. It didn't work out. So that was a great. Uh... Oh, listen. Sometimes you start a movie and you have no idea. You have no idea what the ending is. You have no idea how you're going to do something. You just go. And hope that the creativity <laughs> arrives. It always works somehow. Is that where you get the expression, we'll cut around it? <laughs> <laughs> this baby lights up. I believe we used some front screen material on this, uh, which is a highly reflective... Uh, yeah, there we are. Oh, you, just we're turn, blasting, you just turn the light onto it? We're blasting it light through yeah. there on her. There's another one out the window the, at the church. The wide shots here, they're simply a, a, a blazing light. But when you get into the close-up... Front, front lit. It's from behind that wall on her. And when we get to a close-up and she puts her hands through, we use the mercury. That's when you really needed to sell it. Needed that close-up. But with bright light like that, you actually cannot see so her there hand it is. Going There's the mercury. Uh -huh. There it is. That's a phony hand, and we're just putting it in there. And we're coming into the swimming pool on the other side. Uh -huh. So you have somebody underwater? With the other hand? Mm -hmm. Oh my. Did you come up with that idea? Yeah. Very Is that good. okay? That's a very good. <laughs> you approve of that? That's why you're the director. Oh, there goes a hand. Oh my goodness. Ow. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, it's all fake, isn't it, Pete? <laughs> Not that wall. <laughs> Oops, she grows it back again. <laughs> Off goes the head. I think she puts her head, picks her head up, doesn't she? Yeah. Uh, puts it back on. She can do all sorts of great things. <laughs> I knew she was a good actress. There you go. Wow. That's, that's the, and she kind of set it, settles it down. Oh, it was fun. It was so much fun. <laughs> She's having a blast, too. Donald is. Oh, both of them are. And she's just loving this part. Is that the end of Donald? Did he just get crushed? No, he that? got trapped back there for a minute. Trapped. And uh, Lisa's going to take care of business here. That's oh, me, there Grandma. you are. You've been you on the ground, I was, pal. I was dead, didn't you? <laughs> I could only hope. <laughs> <laughs> That's cold. Now, the, the scene where... Uh, you don't mind giving away these secrets then, huh, John? No, I don't mind. Not here. The scene where the... The two girls, uh, Lisa and 
And Susan plunged through the water. Was it, they dove into the swimming pool, basically. We're shooting underneath. And it was, at least I had a little problem with it because it's dark. You can't see anything. We shut the lights off uh -huh. and she had to hold her breath. And she was scared. I don't blame her. It was a little tough. I, went, I talked to her about that a couple of years ago. I said, I apologized. So she's now she's bringing out whatever's on the other side. So it's like you can see Which it coming up. looks to be up, slightly larger. Coming up out of the, uh, now she's going to do it. Go, baby, go. Now we're in, through into the swimming pool. Uh -huh. You see how we're, he breaks the glass. The other side shatters. There we go. That's her there. And that's, we turn the light on the underwater. pool. Underwater. And now, turn it off. in real life, she's trying to get out of there like nobody's business. But she, uh -huh. She's a little... You know, it's dark. But there's just a little opening over by the staircase. She's mm -hmm. got to turn around and swim to the <laughs> staircase. You know and But there's you have somebody there with her. Yeah, but it's still it's frightening. Yeah, and she has to hold her breath for a half a minute, right? So now we've kind of come to the end of this section. We have a little, uh, a little deal in the very end. Oh, there you are, smoking, smoking away. So basically, evaporating. basically, she took the devil back into the devil, devil land, and everybody else just expires right there. It all ends, except for the fact that the figure now in the in the dream changes because. Uh, the figure was actually somebody else. Well, you will find out in the end. I'm not quite sure what it all means, but it sure was fun well, to he's do. He's still thinking about his girl that he just lost. Yeah, of course he is. She saved humanity. So Dennis finally gets out. And hope is on the way. And Alice, Alice and, his, and his tribe are now retreating somewhere. They've wandered away. They're going back to... Uh... We actually got about three or four police cars and a, and a fire truck for this movie. That was our big, this is our big shot. <laughs> is this the compliments of the city of L.A.? I believe it is. Oh, I'm No, I think we had to rent all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's our boy. I think he's going to be taken away. And... Interesting to watch this again after so many years. What's interesting about it is that uh, I'm... I haven't seen this in so long. I've, I've forgotten what the uh, exactly what the visual style was like. This has always interested me to see what I was doing at the time. It's one of my most controlled films visually. Every shot I can see, every shot is basically set to a purpose. Where in some films I will let things go. I will let it be more loose. I'll let actors improvise. Every shot in here is uh, is specifically designed to communicate something. I think that's partially because of the budget we had, partially because we had to do it so quickly that some of these shots had to work standalone. You couldn't cut uh, around and you couldn't, uh, couldn't get more coverage, but it would also make you work really hard to get exactly what you want in the shot. Now here's the... A new image. Here's the new dream. The image is still a dark image back there, but it's been slightly different now. And it looks somewhat familiar. It will in a minute. Is this where you provide the hope? This, I don't know about hope, but it's, it's, uh, Lisa Blunt is now the, uh, angel of darkness. He wakes up. There she is, and he wakes up again. <laughs> That's a double dream? Yeah. Cheap trick. Well, Pete's been a lot of fun sitting here talking with you. Yeah, this is great. This is great. About this movie. We're coming up to the final moment, which is uh, he reaches for the mirror, and we don't, his fingers never really touch it. And uh, We're roaring away on the soundtrack. You, he, we never know if he's going to go to her or not, right? We don't know. We don't well, know. John, this has been great. I, it was, it, this was fun, but it was a lot more fun doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and I thank all of you for watching this and listening to both of us, Peter Jason and John Carpenter. And uh, if you have any questions, ask John. <laughs> and we'll see you later at the movies. <laughs>